What's going on, everybody? This is the Junior and Leo Show. We're a podcast where we like to talk to creative people doing creative things in and around the greater Sacramento area and beyond. My name is Junior Bruce, coming at you. Uh, across the table from me is the Mexican with the soul patch, the mustache, and the mixer, Mr. Leo Zaniga. Hello, hello. Coming at you from the Big Z Broadcast Studios West. On this episode, we've got a young, spits hot fire, up and coming recording artist. Uh, we got young Sam in the hey, studio hey, today. Hey guys. All right, uh, also known as Samuel. Yes, sir. I guess it's your, your Christian name. Yes. Yes, all right. But uh, we'll call you young Sam. Uh, we'll call you young Sam. We'll stay, we'll stay you know, on point with the branding. Okay, okay that's very important. <laughs> um, but uh, you hit us up uh, on the Facebook page. You want to come on? Yes. Uh, you've been doing some other uh, some other podcasts out there, trying yes, to get yourself out there, get, you know, build your name uh, up. So uh, yeah, excited to have you on, man. Excited to talk to you. Hey, man, excited to be here also. Yeah, man. So uh, well, let's just get into it. So right. uh, you know, you're you're a young man trying to get into the. Uh, you're in the hip hop game. Yes. Okay. So you're a rapper. Yes, I am. And are you also a producer? Uh, I don't produce my own music. I do have a friend who do who does that for me. Okay, so you are basically like the Macklemore, and he is your beat maker. Yes, he is. Okay, and then maybe maybe I don't know. How do you feel about that comparison? Uh, it's it's pretty good. Okay, all right, cool. Well, I, I'm I'm looking at you. So like your, your your general style. All right, you've got the gold chains. All right, very reminiscent of the late '80s and early '90s. Oh yeah. Okay, you look like you have like a De La Soul kind of vibe going to you. Am, am I am I on on mark? Oh, you're doing pretty good. So All right, cool. So, <laughs> so would you say that the, the kind of music that you, you that you're doing is kind of reminiscent to like older school hip hop? Yeah, that's that's my motivation. It's like um, music artists who's done it in the past, and I build off of that because a lot of the music from the '80s and the '90s was storytelling, basically, which is on a beat. So yeah. that's the way my music is. Also, that's that's how it symbolizes to me. It's like. It's a timeline of my life. I'm telling a story on instrumentals, and I just put it out there for people to follow. So you're, are, are you going out? So right now, you're not in the phase of, of your you know, young music career where it's all about money, bitches, and hoes. Oh, definitely not. Okay, yeah, that's coming. Yeah. That's coming, right? Uh, yeah, you know, that's, if, that's if, the goal. <laughs> if things go as planned, you will be talking about all the money's bitches, and hoes. Yeah, but but right now, it's just about, you know... Making ends meet, trying trying to make a name, that Definitely. kind of thing. For right now, it's just me working towards the money and everything else. What? Yeah, you know, your name is Young Sam. Clearly, uh, that that that's an accurate description because you seem. I mean, how old are you? Young I dude? just turned twenty last Thursday, actually. Twenty, not yes. even old enough to drink yet, but he's yeah. out there hustling. I like that. He can afford the gold chains. All right. Did you buy those gold chains for yourself? Yes, I did. All right, good. All right, good. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you could have really gone with the young Sam aspect and said, "No, my mom got got me got me these," and you know, I've been rocking them ever since. Graduation present. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, cool, man. So, uh, do you? Let's start off with a rap name. I mean, uh, you know, I I have rapped to myself in the car every once in a while, <laughs> just as I've sang to myself. Yeah. Right. I had one I made up in the 80s that yeah, I still yeah. remember. It's <laughs> I mean, totally it, stupid. It's one of those things where like everybody fancies himself a rapper yeah. at one, I got one. time mm-hmm. in, in their life, uh, whether they tell people or not. Uh, I say gentlemen and ladies in mind. There you go. You got to hit those. I mean, well, I mean, <laughs> I, did uh, I did that when I was in high school. The syllables can act as additional <laughs> words, man. You can you can uh, manipulate you those words. You make about an eight syllable word. Uh, yes, you can. So, but uh, coming up on Young Sam, you know, uh, what made you decide to go that? I mean, it's very old school. Oh yeah. So uh, you could have gone Sammy Sam. Is there a Sammy Sam out there? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, maybe when you get tired of being Young Sam, you know, at least you didn't start with Lil Sam. Yeah. That, that was that was the first that was the first goal. Cause was I, it? Yeah, I started writing music at the age of ten, and at the time I wanted to go with Little Sam or Sammy, but at the time also there was another music artist with the name Sammy. So then I was just like, you know, Young Sam. Yeah, yeah, I'm young and I'm I'm, I'm Sam. I guess. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you really, if you would have started in you know as an infant, you could have been like Infant Sam or, or Little Sam, <laughs> Toddler then, Sam, Toddler Sam, then Little Sam, <laughs> yeah, then you know Little Sammy, yeah. and then Young Sam. And then eventually you'll be old Sam. Sam. S-S-I or just Sam. Sam. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So 
was scared of Sam. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Sam. Yeah, you got to throw that extra in there. Yeah. So, uh, wh when did you decide? So, you said you started writing stuff when you were 10, 11. At the age of 10, yes. And, and what, were some, what were some of the earliest ideas of, like, got you into wanting to do that kind of thing? Oh, uh, well, when I was growing up, I'm from uh, West Africa, by the way, Lagos, Nigeria. So a lot of the music I listened to were Afro beats, and it was just music that makes you want to dance. And You're stuff. from there, or you just yeah? I, I'm I was born and raised there, there, and then moved yeah. to the United States at the yeah. age of ten. So okay. wow, yeah. When I came to America, that's when I really got into rap, and then I was like, I can try, I can use the style that I learned back home, and just okay, so you got which that. is also storytelling on with the music. Right, and I could use it here also. So then I started writing music here, but I didn't really get serious into it until the age of sixteen after I graduated high school. Where did you find that? Uh, I mean, were you did, were you fluent? Did you speak English before oh, yeah. you were over here? So they speak English. Oh, yes, yeah, so okay. I talk second language out there also. Okay, but I mean, did you feel like it helped you? Uh, the music helped you uh, get you know acclimatized or kind of you know get into society and yeah, connect it, with people? Yeah, it really did. It really did because it. Um, I, I was a really shy kid when I first, me growing up, but then as soon as I got into the music, you know, I started opening up more because I'm, I'm thinking to myself, you know, if I'm going to tell these people my story, not just like doing them listening to it or watching the videos, but also I, I perform on stage, I do live performances, and I want them to feel what I'm feeling when I'm performing the song, or like, I want them to be in the same position as I was when I was, when I thought about writing the song, when I started writing the song, and when I was recording the song. Do you ever, uh, do you have the, because uh, I'm not sensing uh, a really heavy accent, I mean, is that something you've worked on? Yeah, that's something that I definitely grew out of, I guess. Okay. Like my mom says, I'm, in, I'm Americanized now, so. Yeah, <laughs> uh, so she's, she's half written you off. Yeah, yeah basically. Uh, well, uh, do you, do you, uh, do you ever, like, uh, bring that back out, or whatever you need I, I, to? I do every time, like, every time I'm home, it's just my whole family's from West Africa. You just so, slip right into it? Yeah, we just... We try to mix it up a little every once in a while so we don't forget where we came from. So yeah. I can guarantee any dude that's kind of even half sounds Jamaican, he'll like, even, not even normally, he'll bring it into a rap if he could because they, they'll throw in the, they'll throw in the, uh, that accent if they can. So you, you never throw that into any of your music? Or Me, anything? no, I've been working on it. It's probably something that will end up coming out. That will end up coming up later. I on. mean, hey, it, like Sh Shaggy. I don't think he was from Jamaica, but he made a whole career out of having that that style. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's definitely something that you're not hearing right now. Yeah, so it sets you apart a little bit with yeah, a little bit of an accent. But that's what I've heard too. Is like, I mean, you see, like people from England or Europe who, if you talk to them, they would have accents. But if they sing. They don't have any accent yeah. when they sing, and I mean, and it's kind of odd, but it, it, it's well, Ozzy Osbourne, you can't you can't understand that guy when he's talking. Yeah, but when, when he's, he's singing, yeah, it's all that's, right. That's Alzheimer, dude. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's drugs, bro. Yeah. <laughs> the brain cell yeah, I think that's also kind of like camouflage, so he doesn't talk, have to talk to his wife that much. Yeah. It's like she, yeah. If I make this as unintelligible as I can, I understand you. <laughs> yeah, she'll just give up on trying to talk yeah. to him. So, okay, so you got serious at 16. Yeah. Uh, what what was it that uh, really kind of, uh, what was that moment where you said, man, I really want to get into this. I really want to make this uh, this work. Uh, it was my senior year in high school. We had a little rap group going on. How are you 16 and a senior? Are you like a Doogie Howser? Are you a, Something like that. You're a legit I, genius? Yeah. Have you already I like to think I am. Do you, have a PhD, do you have a PhD already? No, not yet. I'm okay. working on my bachelor's. <laughs> okay. So you slowed down a little bit since you were 16 yeah. academically. Okay. So uh, we had a little rap group going on, and we would do ciphers every other Fridays or so. So I started so, getting... Just, just, so, just so I know what a cipher is, but I don't think Leo does. For for those for those uh, for those laymen and women who don't know what a cipher is, what's a cipher? A cipher is basically a gathering where we have a group of five, six, seven people, and we like to we like to spit rhyme over an instrumental or freestyle or break. Uh, and, and it's if typically you were a hippie, it would be a drum circle. So basically, something like that. Or a hacky sack circle where yeah. you just kind of beat it back and forth. Uh, and and there's there's no there's no real. Uh, uh, order to it. It's just whoever wants to jump go, in. Just go right in, yeah. Yeah. So I got into that. I, I did it a couple of times, and then by the time um, end of senior year came around, I was like, man, like I, I saw the progression from when I started at the age of ten to like what I like what I became now. So I was like, I want to I want to make this a career. I want to make a life out of this. I want to make a living out of this. So ever since sixteen, you've been you've been yeah, working. My at first it. video came out at the age of sixteen and a half before I turned seventeen. Mm -hmm. And it did thirty thousand 
views on YouTube in about three months. And now, was it was this good attention or bad attention? Oh, it was good attention. Good attention? Uh, yeah, the song was titled till the very end, and it being my first song, it had a lot of meaning to it to me. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, the lyrics said to the very end, to the very end, I'll rent my city to the very end, I put up for my town to the very end. So basically it's just me telling people like, whatever you do, as a um, as a positive message to anyone who listens to it or anyone who just references it, whatever you do, no matter what anyone says, you know, do it to the very end because you never know the outcome. You never right. know if it's going to be, whatever it's going to lead to at the end. Do you, think, do you think your age and then also the positive message played a part in it being uh, accepted? Yeah, I feel like it did because, I mean... For my first song that I put out, which was to the very end, I got an award nomination for it down in LA as a musical, um, as an underground artist, nice. and as an up and coming artist. So I felt like that really helped me out a lot because at that time I could have been writing music about stuff that I don't have or stuff that money bitches yeah, and hoes, man. Exactly. <laughs> See, there you go. But it's me just motivating people and me trying to motivate myself also. So I felt like a lot of people could relate to it and a lot of people connect to it and that really helped me out. What was the award you were nominated for? Uh, I was nominated down at the 818 Music Award in um, LA at the Valley, the Valley Award Music Show. And I was nominated as an underground artist and as an up and coming artist. So did you get to go down there? And yeah, it was it was a very nice trip. I had to fly down to LA for three days. They fly you down, or did you have to pay? Oh, I had to pay. Uh, yeah, I drove down you. there. So there you go. There you go. It was pretty. It was a pretty good experience. Though. Did you get to perform or anything? Yes, like that? I got to perform red carpet interviews, and it was just like oh, a, nice. a like a small image into what's what's to expect in the future, basically. So uh, th that's one thing that I, I really want to get into you about uh, on this episode was you're kind of coming up at a time where I mean you you've never known creative life without new media without Twitter without YouTube without you Facebook. Got two phones, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, and and clear you have I mean looking at you right now like I don't know how you go out on stage but you seem to have a very very strong sense of how you want to present yourself visually. True. Okay, you have a clear sense of okay, this is my look, uh, you know, and, and with you already producing and posting videos on YouTube, you know, you already know how to like. You're looking to cultivate an audience online, okay, which is something that I think you know, folks maybe ten years your senior are still trying to figure out and catch yeah, up with. Yeah, don't understand it. Yeah. Uh, how, I mean, are you happy to be coming up at this time? Do you wish you would have come up at a different time? I mean, or I, I mean, I'm curious, because like, it's one of those things that I struggle with too, is trying to understand how to cultivate and utilize social media. I mean, I think about it also sometimes, like what would have happened if I had started this um, 10 years ago at the age of 10 and was more serious about it, but I'm actually pretty happy to be coming up now Especially with the new age and with the new media and everything that is out there and the new options to reach out to people out there. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with it right now. Like, I didn't rush into it and I took my time to develop myself as an artist and to get my lyrics right so people could follow along with me. So I'm pretty happy about it right now. But when you say, though, I mean, you're still developing your voice. Yeah, I'm still developing a voice for myself. You're, definitely. you're basically, you're cutting your teeth in front of a watching public. True. Online. Uh, what I mean outside of the thirty, the thirty hit, thirty thousand uh, views that your first video got, like right away. Uh, what has been the reaction, and and how have you gone to gone about dealing with any kind of like negativity that's come your way? There's always people who are going to who are going to say negative stuff. And yeah, that's part of the thing. Like the difference, the huge difference that I see now is. Back then, before like the music really got serious, I could go on Facebook, I could go on Twitter, and say whatever I want to say with no one caring. Yeah. But now I have to be, I have to be courteous, I have to be limited to what I say to not to offend people because I'm trying to build myself as a positive person. Right. And I want people to see me as a positive person, and the way my dress, the way I speak, the way I interact with other people, I want that to sign up as a positive person also. So that's basically what it is for me. Yeah, I mean, it's it's very strange what, what you're saying. Uh, it's 100% legit, and it's something that I think anybody who's coming up nowadays really has to be aware of. I mean, we just saw the story about uh, you know Trevor Noah, South African comedian, you know, being promoted to the head chair on the Daily Show. Mm -hmm. And at first, it's all great, and then within you know 24 hours, they start they're digging deep. They're they're digging into like year old, you know, three year old tweets yeah. that are just they're 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 jokes that didn't hit. And he didn't have the foresight to delete him, and now you know his name is being right through the mud. So I I, I, I respect the fact that you're aware enough 
of that. I mean, I know I know some people who are coming up, and, and they haven't quite figured out how to do that yet. Uh -huh. But there's also an added pressure to that, because now, even if you do have an honest, you know, reaction to something, mm -hmm. you have to think twice about sharing it. Oh, uh, yeah, definitely. So how often do you find yourself biting your tongue when it comes to, you know, the way you relate to somebody or communicate with somebody online? A lot. Yeah? A lot, because, I don't know, it's like... Every day, I get different messages, like people say, oh, switch up your style, or stop trying to rap like you're this person, or stop trying to act like you're from this age, you're from this generation, try to rap like how they do now, and I'm just like, thanks for the opinion, I'll yeah. put it into consideration, basically. You know, well, you know I, I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not a big hip-hop guy, uh, I've got a lot of respect for, for strong lyricism, uh, I'm a big fan of like battle rap and stuff, we've actually had some local rap, you know, battle rap, uh, Andrew Defay. Oh well, yeah, Andrew, Andrew Defy on here from uh, Zero Forbidden Goals, but we also had, uh, like, there's a No Excuses Rap League uh -huh. in town and stuff, and they do rap battles. I watch all that stuff. Um, but one thing that always trips me out is, like, I know that there are trolls in every subgenre available on YouTube. Oh, yeah. But the hip-hop trolls seem to be some <laughs> of the, like, most aggressive... And just nastiest, meanest people on the planet. Oh yeah, and <laughs> and it, it's crazy. Like I can watch, I can watch one 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 thing, and I'll see it'll it'll be fifty percent love it, like love it, and then fifty percent absolutely hate it with very little in between. Mm -hmm. And it, is that something that you've seen? Is that is that indicative of hip hop as, in general? Because it seems like there's like half the people love what's going on right now, like the Wallays and, and, and the Drakes and all those guys who are big right now. Uh, and then half of them are like, no, they're, they're, they're shit. I listen to these guys. True. That's only because you know, only a certain people could relate to a certain genre or a certain message the artist is trying to convey out. There's people who, who can relate to it, and there's some people who say, we don't care about it, you know. Like, we, we're not going to pay attention to it because it doesn't have to do with us. Like, a lot of, like, for example, Wale, you brought up, he, he raps about his life also, and he raps about some very interesting topics, like, especially general topics of what's going on out there in the world right now and stuff like that. And a lot of people care about it because they pay attention to it, and a lot of people don't because they want to hear what other people rap about, which is money, cars, and... Well, you're like yeah, a Rick exactly. Ross kind of guy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, it really, it's really up to the audience. It really varies what type of audience you market out to, because not everybody will like your style sometimes. And do you find that you, with with you embracing social media and YouTube as early as you, as you have, mm -hmm. uh, would you say that that's, yeah, that's causing your skin to be a bit thicker when it comes to criticism? Oh, yeah. I've definitely adapted to it. It's just, it's something that I experience every day now. So it's just me just being a, um, a daughter about it and just say, you know what, everyone has their own opinion. Where, where have you gotten the most reaction? Has it been uh, you what, across all the different social media? Uh, I would have to say Twitter. Twitter? I had to leave Twitter a little. Uh, <laughs> the funny story, um, You quit I, Twitter? No, I didn't quit Twitter personally, but I had to leave a little because uh, a lot of people had a lot to say when I first started. And yeah. And that's usually how, that's how, that's how they get you. That's how I see it. You know, when you first start, a lot of people have a lot to say and then you can't always fight everybody you can't always right. argue with everybody so I just said you know I'll take some time off from Twitter and every time I go on Twitter it's just to promote my music right. just to tweet it out there to people who are interested in listening to it well I mean what were some of the things that people were saying and then how did you I mean how did you try to respond well it's just like um a lot of people would say stuff like, oh, like, why do you do music? Like, quit, um, quit hip-hop and stuff like that. Meanwhile, this is me still developing. And you're, and lyrics. are you 16 at this time? Yes, I was 16. I so was you're a teenager. 17 at that time, actually. Just turned Assholes, 17. man. Yeah, exactly. And I was I'll bet just, you they're like 30, 40-something-year-old. I bet. <laughs> you know, they, they think they hold the holy grail on opinions when it comes to hip-hop, and they're telling this teenager to yeah, give it's up like your dream, job. you suck. It's yeah. Like a job for <laughs> guys. Yeah, yeah that's how I see it. Too. Troll. I mean, yeah. that's where the word troll came from. Yeah. You just sit around and just look for people to bash. Because well, I, 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 I mean, I'm not trying to like get into like the dirt side of it, but I think this is important for anybody who's listening. You know, anybody who is your age, younger, or maybe a bit, a bit older, uh -huh. understanding that anytime you put yourself out there, creatively or otherwise, you, you, you are now facing the potential wrath of a sea of trolls. Oh yeah, definitely. Right. So, and I think I, I, I want because you are about promoting a positive image, mm -hmm. you know, through and through. How, how, 
outside of you taking a step back, it, clearly you didn't give it up. Oh yeah. Definitely. So you still use it. Oh yeah. But 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 taking a step back from handling these people, uh, how? What do you say to somebody who finds himself in a similar situation? Uh, how do you tell them to, to how how to how to properly handle it? Uh, just ignore whatever they have to say and keep doing whatever you're doing. Just, so yeah. just ignore it. Yeah, just ignore it because eventually it'll fade away. Because a lot of people, a lot of those people then are the one retweeting my song now and favoriting it and sharing it to other people. So basically, I saw it as a test to see if I could hang and to see if I would continue doing what I was doing. You thought they were basically trying to stretch you and, and kind of punch you in the face and see if he's really got the hard to Exactly, to yeah, to see if I can actually keep putting out more songs, even all the criticism they've put out there. Well, you know, and that also seems to be a, like, uh, you know, the, in hip-hop specifically, it is very image-driven. So, I mean, you've got, yeah. a lot, you've got a lot of these guys who are like, you know... You know, it, it's it's a uh, it's a uh, it's face. It's all about face. Yeah, it's, oh, yeah. yeah. They, you know, they, they they get some sort of shine off of having street cred. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you have legit street cred? Me, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great. I, answer. I couldn't yeah. do that. <laughs> uh, so you, you haven't been shot multiple times. No, definitely not. Yeah. I, I stay find, away from. Trouble. Never been arrested. Do you find regional? There's regional beefs between. People or are you deep that deep into it yet? Uh, um, there's been a couple. A well, couple. Wait, 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 which Sacramento hood are you repping now? I, so. I'm from Citrus Heights, so. <laughs> <laughs> so you and Orangevale got to be hating on each other, uh, right? No, really. I just try to stay away from all every whatever else people got going on that doesn't help me promote myself, basically. Right. So it's, uh, yeah. there's been a couple music artists that do. Couple shots at me, but I was yeah. just like, I'm too busy trying to, you know, make the next move to be worried about me trying know, to write man. lyrics about you guys. But, but beef's, uh, you know, it's beef's pretty entertaining. Beef's I mean, I've, I've seen a couple. I sit there and laugh about it, but I'm just like, I'm not at that time in it's my life. Sometimes, oh yeah, it definitely is because you don't know how serious or how far people can take it. Well, and, and, and they take it far for street cred. To oh, yeah. face and stuff. And the problem too is that I mean the audience. The audience seems hungry for that sh that that kind of stuff. So, like, if if you wind up if if like you know uh, you know three dudes from from Orangevale and a dude from uh, like Elk Grove start like you know beating up on you lyr lyrically and you don't respond, then you got to worry about people wondering if you're weak. Exactly. That's you know? <laughs> it's like it's like it, it, it's it's I I can only imagine how difficult it is. How do you navigate those waters? You know. Yeah. Just, there was a video I just saw. Okay, I wish I remember the rapper's name, but supposedly he went and found the people that were like dogging him on Facebook on uh, on YouTube, and he found the guy and he takes a baseball bat and starts beating his car and stuff. Legit? I, that's what it seemed like. Oh, I, I don't know. It, it, it was odd. I that mean, is I, not a positive way to respond to that. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Oh, I found <laughs> the guy. You know, he's yelling at the guy. Come out! He's like, come out! And the dude was like all big and freaking steroided out too. This rapper. The rapper. And uh, yeah. And it's, Supposedly the girlfriend was videotaping him, telling him to leave, and then he's like, I know this is his car, and he started taking a baseball bat to it. So, it was interesting. I watched it. Yeah. It might have been staged, but I don't know. Yeah, how do you... Now, now, now this isn't really interesting aspect, too. Now, uh, young Sam here seems to really... I mean, he, he is a product of the new generation, mm -hmm. for sure, and that I don't don't take any disrespect to that. Oh, no, no, no. It's definitely something that, that you know, Leah and I don't see a lot of here, because... Not only did you show up, but you, of course you were on time. You yeah. Know. Was he early? Early. He was early. <laughs> That's how respectful he is. I was two minutes late. Uh, I walk in, and there is a camera. There's a camera set up on this so that he can capture it. Not promoting. So he can capture it for YouTube. And this is one of the few times where I'm going to see a guest have a cell phone, all right, in their hand and not be, uh, not feel disrespected. Yeah. Because I know for a fact. I'm pretty sure. Did you just Instagram or Vine or yes. you just snap, <laughs> just Snapchatted us? Yeah, I right. saw. It's already on. There's already one on Facebook. You took some pictures. I mean, on it, Facebook. I saw. I mean, really, people are getting a chance to kind of follow your journey. Oh yeah. Uh, in real time, and that's that. I mean, I think I. I that's insanity to me. Like I respect it. Don't yeah. get me wrong. And that, clearly, that's what it's going to take going forward. The further you know, enveloped in social media and the internet that we get, I mean, everybody's going to be living in real time. Yeah, but I'm like, I mean, just everything that you're doing, you're eating and you're washing your clothes. I mean, just whatever, man. It's just yeah, have little cameras on your head. It's so it's like, it's like I, I watch the the show Twenty Four, and they pack so much into that hour. I'm living in like you know seventy two. You know, like, <laughs> like it's gonna take me like three times as long to to, to, to make something happen 
Whereas he's, he, it seems like he's living 12th. Like, every single second is being recorded, it's being, you know, Definitely marketed, it's documented. It yeah. Uh, do you, I mean, do you plan on, like, taking all this footage that, you, that you're capturing and, and doing, like, a documentary? Oh, something? yeah. Um, I keep a lot of my footage, even from younger days, because at the moment, I am working on an um, album called Who Am I? So, basically, the intro video is, like, I have scenes from when I was younger writing music. I have scenes from my high school cypher group, you know reciting rhymes and yeah. I have scenes from like my shows now and other stuff so it's basically this scene like random scenes from back then and now all mixed together to show like what I am now basically I'm curious like at one point do you ever fear that at some point with you living uh, you know living the image right marketing the image and, and also the music uh, it, it, it's sad because image is really like a bigger part of it now than oh, yeah, the music definitely. is uh, do you ever fear, though, that you'll lose yourself, like, the true sense of yourself in that somewhere along the way, where you start living your life according to what you think the image needs versus what Samuel needs? Uh, definitely not. Um, I've always learned to stay me, no matter what. I've been through a lot in my life to, like, have changed. But yeah. I still stay me. I still stay the same humble guy I am and, you know, always put God first and just continue to pursue who I am and my dreams, basically. So, I don't really see anything change me. Well, not like... Uh, I'm not... Physically, yes, I can see that happening, but uh, attitude-wise and behavior-wise, I, I don't really see that happening. And if so, not anytime soon, at least. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I think, I mean, the younger generation, my kids included, um, they're used to being on social media, they're used to just basically showing everything about themselves, and it's almost second nature. Where we've had people in here who act a certain way, and the second you put a microphone on them, they change. You, We see the change from talking to them before the mic was on to talking to them. And, yeah, I mean, they're just so used to it now, I think, the younger kids. Yeah, and I mean, when you do eventually, I mean, if you meet with success and you eventually grow on to, you know, you know having a bigger more you know more mainstream career uh -huh. at least uh you know in whatever niche that you fill you know you're going to be more prepped i mean you've already you already you've already your own marketing team your uh, online marketing i mean social marketing is so fucking huge right now yeah you know what definitely. i mean but but then you know if you can learn how to produce your own beats you it's know it works yeah, <laughs> it's definitely see, then, it works